Glad to see you all today in the house of the Lord. Truly, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, come and magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together can somebody shout glory to God put your hands together and give the Lord a hand of praise he's worthy to be praised is there anybody in here the Lord been good to lift a hand and tell Jesus thank you today hallelujah hallelujah amen let's pray father you've been so good to us and we give you the praise and we give you all the glory. We come here down to this bless your name and we come to sit in your presence. Pray you bless us. While we're here, we pray you will bless us as we bless you. Have your way here today. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in this service, even as you would have it to be done in heaven. Give us this day the bread we need from heaven. We thank you for that in advance. We thank you and decree the kingdom of God is established in this place. We thank you Satan has no say so. No part in anything in this house today or in the lives of the people today. This is our prayer. We believe we count it done in Jesus name. All that agree say amen. Can you shout glory to God three times. Good morning, Jump and Run! Put your hands together. Let's praise the Lord this
Hallelujah. I love you, Lord, more than anything. Hallelujah. More than anything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated at this time. Hallelujah. More than anything. I love him because he first loved me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I can 
so I can be free, so I can be whole, so I can tell everyone I know. You, you thought, thought I was worth saving. Hallelujah. 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 Look with me today at the 62nd Psalm, Psalm 62. Psalm 62, verse 1. The Lord uh, has been leading me to come against some preconceived ideas that people have about him. Some of these preconceived ideas came about as a result of religion. Religion is man's idea of God, man's idea of God and man's idea of God's expectation. We've come up with a lot of things in the church that we think about God and we believe about God that are not biblically based. And so the Lord said some of those things, it's time for them to be rooted out and thrown down and torn down so that the Lord through Holy Spirit can begin to build us on the right foundation of who he really is. The word is God and God is the word. You know God to the extent that you know the word because God is the word and he is one with the word. So the Lord's been really dealing with me and we said some things on Thursday night. If you weren't here, you may want to get the CD. And he wants to continue saying some things today about himself and about us. Uh, I'm going to begin reading at verse 1, Psalm 62, verse 1. Do you have it? 
Psalm 62, verse 1. <clears throat> Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. We talked about salvation a few weeks ago, that's your deliverance, your rescue. From him cometh my salvation. He only, he only, and the word only is important, is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly, Selah. Verse 5. My soul, wait thou now. Now, the psalmist now is talking to himself. And keep in mind, this is a song. It's going to be put to music. But right now, he's, he's talking to himself. He says, my soul, wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation, my glory, the rock of my strength. And my refuge is in God. Verse 5 is where we want to lift a thought from today. My soul, he's talking to himself now. Wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. Underline circle, highlight the word expectation. Now this psalm is credited to David, and it's nothing new. David is again going through a bunch of changes that just come apart, just come as a part of just being alive. You know, if you're alive, you're gonna go through some changes from time to time. Family drama, work drama, you know, all kind of drama. And so here, David again, and that's why I love David, because we see him going through just about every conceivable situation that a man can go through. So we see himself again. We see David again going through changes. And then he teaches us what to do as he talks to himself when our faith is being tested. Have you, has your faith ever been tested? Sometimes your faith can be on trial. And sometimes it can be fiery trials that come to try you. Anybody here? So he talks to himself and he also teaches us what to do when our faith is being tested. Verse 5 is where he talks to him. He says, my soul, talking to his self, his mind, his emotions, those emotions are something else. His will, his intellect, his imaginations. My soul, wait thou only upon God and then he says for my expectation is from him can you say him yeah. now him is God and so David says I'm expecting it's, it's, I'm going through a challenge right now but I'm expecting something from him now, if you know anything about him, you know about his attributes, you know about his characteristics, uh, you know that him or God is love. Is that right? And he is kind, he is merciful, he is just, he's long suffering. And one more thing I want to say about him is he is good. That's his chief characteristic. He's good. Can you say God is good? God is good. 
he's good. So, so David is saying here, and I paraphrase and I translate as you meditate, he says, I'm expecting something good. I'm expecting something good. And, and from that, just that thought about, he said, my expectation is from him, even as he's going through the midst of this trial, uh, uh, we, we derive a subject from that as we begin to rethink God and rethink who he is and what he does, uh, we come up with the subject this morning, uh, I'm expecting something good. Can you say this? I'm expecting something good. Now, 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 uh, my daughter and I were talking this morning in, in the office and we were talking about dark side, light side. See, the, the dark side has embraced, because see, let me tell you something. The enemy cannot offer anything. All he can do is take what God has given and try to pervert it. So, so people in the world and people who are in, in self-help and people who are in all other kind of psychological and uh, things, they have adopted uh, the fact of, 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 of making declarations, of, of making uh, 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 Mantras, thank you, Jim, for making mantras. And they, they, they work this thing, and we need to understand they can work it on up to a certain point. Because let me tell you, when, when you're doing devil stuff, he'll let you do it and let you think you're getting by. And then he'll come with sudden destruction. All the while you thought you were working something. And if you work darkness, you were in darkness. But the reality is, uh, this belongs to us. Uh, the scripture says, thou shalt decree a thing, and it will be established. We talked about established on Thursday night. You can decree a thing. I mean, that's what we can do. And the, and the, Bible, the Bible says the power of life and death is in our tongue. And there's power in what you say when you say what's in line with God. Amen. Your mouth actually becomes his mouth when you are speaking what he said. Amen. Or when you are speaking in line with who he is. So therefore, I, I want to inject something in your daily recitation as you meditate and as you uh, speak uh, daily. I want you to begin to say that, that I'm, I'm expecting something good. Come on, say it with me. I'm expecting something good. I'm expecting something good. Cause see, and, and see, David realizes something here. David realizes that, that, that nobody else can really help him. Can I tell you that when you really get down and out, can't nobody help you but God. No one else can give you peace in the midst of your storm, nobody can help you but God. So, 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 so David says, my soul, he talks to his, and let me tell you something, if you're going to be successful in life, you're going to have to learn how to talk to yourself. He says, my soul, he said, my soul, listen, soul, wait. And the word wait means to be in eager anticipation. See, uh, you got to always be at the point where you are thinking God is getting ready to do something. I wish somebody knew what I was talking about. And even in the midst of when it seems like stuff is crazy, you got to be willing to say, uh, God getting ready to do something. My soul is, my soul, you wait, you anticipate, you expect God to do something, and watch this, if God does it, it's gonna have to be good. If God does it, it's gonna have to be good. That's why, that's why again, the only place you can go to is God. That's why, that's why Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden. He said, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, if I'm meek and lowly and hard, you will find rest for your soul. 
for your soul. But he says, come to me. That's where you are. Come to me. Not to Dick and Sally and Jane and Mary and Clarence and this one and that one. He said, come to me. So David in the text, I like it. He, he, he looks to the future. Let me tell you something. I don't care what you're going through today. Your future is always bright. And you may not need this message today, but you just follow it. Your future is always bright in God. And again, what you know about him, I know he's good. I know that. He's good. What you know about God, I know God is good. That's why the scripture says, oh, taste and see. What did it say? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Good. See, if, if you try him, you'll find out he's good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So since God is good and since I'm his child, uh, I'm expecting, I'm always expecting, my expectation is from him, uh, and, and in regards to what I'm going through, I'm expecting the good God to do something good. Are you hearing me? And all of God's children should be expecting something good. Uh, come on, say it, I'm expecting something good. I'm expecting, I'm expecting something good to happen. Uh, I'm expecting something good to happen to me. I, why? why? Why should I expect? Because I'm God's child. Because I'm God's child. And see, that's why we got to flip the script in our mind and, 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 and erase all those memories that we have where credible people have taught us something other about God than he's good. You got to get that out your mind, see. Because you need to know why, 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 what reason do I have to expect? Why do I have the audacity? Me, why do I have the audacity? Why do I have the spiritual gall to, to, to say I'm expecting something good because uh, I'm God's child and God is my father, so therefore something good's got to happen to me. I, I heard Jesus say, if you being evil know how to give good gifts, to your children. How much more shall your heavenly father give good things huh? to them that just ask him? Are you hearing me? Uh, I'm, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God and God is good. And God is good. Now I want to challenge those religious mindsets that you have especially thinking that God does bad things to people. I want you to get that out of your mind. That's got to be erased because if you believe wrong, you'll receive wrong. Uh, if you believe wrong, you'll receive wrong. I, I, heard, I heard the psalmist saying one, in Psalm 103, don't turn there. It said, it, it, it's talking about the Lord. It said the Lord, Psalm 103 verse 8, it said the Lord is merciful and gracious. Yes. Says with me, said the Lord is merciful. The Lord is, merciful. The Lord is gracious. The Lord is merciful. Then the Bible says the Lord is slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. It goes on to say he will not always chide. The word chide means he doesn't always strive and, and push and pull you. Uh, and then it said neither will he keep his anger forever. And then it says he hath not dealt with us after our sins nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Then it says, for as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. And if you're worried about your past life, he says, as far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgression from us. Are you here? So a lot of people, you know, we came up with that, we, the Lord, uh, and say, I'm a, you're your own greatest testimony, Lord. You came up with that stuff, came up with that stuff, talking, oh, child, the Lord will strike you down. He'll strike you down. Now listen to me. How many in here, I start with me, I'll raise my hand first. How many in here have ever done some things that you deserve being struck down? But guess what? Just your being here this morning, it's testimony that the Lord didn't strike you down. He's not in the striking down business. I can't get no help. And so you can't get stuck. That's why I say the Old Testament got to be read with New Testament glasses. 
because because we learn from Jesus that if you if you if you if you have seen me you have seen the father yeah. Jesus is the perfect representation of God are you hearing what I'm saying? And, and, and I don't care what you saw God do in the old covenant. We, you need to understand we have a new covenant. I wish I had a witness here. With better promises. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are under a new covenant with better promises. And now we get mercy. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. I wish somebody would hear me. Psalm 31 and 19 says this. Don't turn there. You can just read it when you get home. Oh, how great is thy goodness. Watch this. Which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. That means if you respect and, re and revere God, and, and if you respect him and revere him enough to do what he says, he says he's got great, great goodness. Some of y'all too young to know anything about this. He got great goodness on layaway. There, there are some blessings. There are some blessings with your name on it. From my old school, school people. And, and you the only one got the layaway ticket. There are blessings with your name on it. I said he's a good God. I said he's a good God. He's a good God. And, and the Bible says he has great goodness that's laid up for them that just will fear him. Uh, the Bible says the Lord is good to all. Psalm 145 and 9. The Lord is good to all and his mercies are over all his works. I tell you how good he is. He's, good. He's even good to sinners because he gives them space to repent. Uh, he was good to me because he didn't let me die while I was in my sins. I wish I had a witness right here. He saved me uh, in due time. At the right time. He saved me just at the right time. He's good. He's good to all. He's good to all. His mercies are over all his work. So therefore, what we come up is, is we should have an expectation of good every day. Now, here we go. Here we go. Well, well, you know, you know, you know what, you know what Murphy Law say. Murphy Law say that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Uh, now, I want to ask you, uh, un, are you under Murphy or are you under Jehovah? I didn't get no answer. Huh? Are you on the Murphy or are you on the Jehovah? Well, therefore, anything that can go right will go right. See, you need to understand that your expectation is a magnet. It's a magnet. Your expectation draws to you. Because the expectation is, is tied either to fear or faith. You know what faith is? Faith is faith is believing what God's word says and acting like it's true. You know what fear is? Fear is believing what the devil says and then acting like it's true. So therefore, at any time in life, you are either in faith or you are in fear. You cannot be in faith and fear at the same time. But if your expectation is from him, that says something good. I wish somebody had heard that. Something good, something bad might be happening right now. It may look crazy right now, but I have an expectation of good, and I expect good every day. Now let me, let me just make one more round on these religious thinking folk. I got to get that out of you so you can start experiencing some good. Well, no. well now, Pastor Lawson, I hear what you are saying, but, but what about all those scriptures in the Bible that talk about the wrath of God? What about all those scriptures in the Bible that talk about the terror of the Lord? He's terrible and he's a God of wrath. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You need to understand that when you got saved. Are there any saved folk in here today? See, when you got saved, uh, you went through a spiritual transfer. You were transferred out of the dominion of darkness. 
and you are brought into the kingdom of God and his dear son. You need to understand that once you get saved, there is no bad news in the Bible. I'm going to let that marinate just for a minute. Any saved folk in here today? It's all good news. It's all good news. Once you get, now, now if you ain't saved, there, there, there's some stuff in there. One scripture even says, to say for we knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But his terror ain't it. Can I tell you, can I tell you that all of God's anger, he unleashed it on Jesus. See, this is new stuff. This is like new doctrine, but it's not. It's, this is the truth. He put it up. Surely, surely, he's borne our griefs, carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement that was needed for our peace is upon him. See, see, that's why you ought to love Jesus. You ought to, every time you walk in the door, your hands ought to be raised. Every time you hit the floor in the morning, you ought to be saying, thank you, Jesus. Because Jesus took your punishment. Once you get saved, ain't no bad news in the Bible. I said, once you get saved. That's why you ought to read it sometime. It's nothing but good news. Now that you say, ain't nothing but good news in the book. Well, Pastor Lawson, uh, uh, suppose you find yourself in sin. Well, if any man sin, we have an advocate. If we confess our sins, that means if we admit it and be willing to quit it. I can't get no help up in here. If we confess our sin, what, here's the good news. He is faithful and just to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all. That's good news to me because every now and then, every now and then, I sin. I can't get nobody up here. Ain't talking about no woman, ain't talking about no wine. You need to understand there's more sins than women and wine. But thank God for precious Holy Spirit. He'll come tell you. Huh? He'll come remind you that you, that was not the way my son should act. That's not the way my son should behave. Then you have a chance to repent. Change your mind so you can change your ways. There ain't no bad news in the book. If you're saved, are you hearing what I'm saying? Those, those, those wrath scriptures are for the, for the unsaved. Let me, let me just read this to you. First Thessalonians, you need to turn here. I'm going to read this to you. Uh, First Thessalonians. And see, while I'm, while I'm turning, let me tell you something. While you're turning and finding First Thessalonians, you know, these are the last days. These are the last days. Because even as I'm preaching this right here, some super theological folk will say, well, well these are the last days. He's talking about something good that's going to happen. He needs to be uh, talking and telling folk that Jesus is soon to come. Listen to it, all right? Jesus is soon to come. And it seemed like he'd be trying to get some sinners saved. Well, I'm going to flip the script now, because it seemed like you'd be trying to get some sinners saved. I'm going to take a pause for the cause. Because, see, my job, my job, he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry. Let me just take a poll. How many of y'all here saving? You know, wave at me, wave at me. You know, all right, so guess who I'm talking to this morning? I'm talking to saved folk for the most part. But guess who you work around all week? Unsaved folk. Guess who your cousin and them need Jesus? Y'all. Guess who auntie and crazy uncle still need to get saved? Yours. Getting quiet now. 
So if it's the last days and sinners need to hear about Jesus, he has given you the ministry of reconciliation. He is in you trying to reconcile folk back to him. So it's the last days, it's the last days, you know it is. You ought to be trying to get somebody to save. You ought to be telling somebody if you don't know nothing but your testimony. What's your testimony? How he saved you. You ought to be able to tell that story. And then tell them that he wants to do you good. I need to make sure I'm in the right house. Has he done good to anybody in here beside me? Oh, it's more than a song. So good, so good, he has been so good. Uh-uh, I need to know where my so good folk at. Uh-uh, 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 he gone beyond just good, he been so good. So the gospel is, the gospel is good news. It, the gospel is you can get in a place with God where you can wake up every morning and say something good going to happen today. Because I've had a lot of good things. I'm talking about, I'm speaking for you now. Had a lot of good things happen in my life and it wasn't nobody but God. I need to walk up and down just one or two rows right here. And if I walk up and down your row, I want you to just wave at your boy. Uh, how many of y'all here can say, uh, my good days outweigh my bad days? Where they at? Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. See? So he's good. May not have everything I want, but praise God, I got everything I need. That's what he said, my God shall supply all your need. Somebody throw your head back and say, I'm expecting something good. So the point is, there's no, there's no bad news in the book for me. Come on, I need you to say amen. Ain't no bad news in the book for me. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm delivered soteria. I'm an heir of soteria. I'm an heir of salvation. I've been delivered. See, I've been delivered. See? And I've already, I've already passed. I've already passed. People, when you hear about so and so, they pass. Look at them, say, I pass too. I pass from death to life. Well, it's appointed unto men once to die, and after, after that, they already died. I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. So then he says right here, 1 Thessalonians 5. Are you there? Uh, 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 let me see. I'm going to start at verse 1. We're doing good on time. Got a few more minutes. Let me start at verse 1. It says this. So this is for the last days people and for those people who say we need to be telling sin or something. And people who say, well, well, you know, all you're doing is picking out the good scriptures. All right. Let me tell you this. It says, but of the times and of the season, brethren. You got verse 1? You have no need that I write unto you, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon the woman with a child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren. Somebody say he's talking about us now. But ye brethren are not in darkness. That the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober. 
putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation why Paul verse 9 verse 9 is right on time for God hath not appointed us to wrath I ain't going no further till you know good news when you hear it. I ain't going another further till you, till you hear that. God has not appointed us to wrath. I told you there ain't nothing good news in this book. You don't know good news when you hear. God, I'm going to stay right there till you get. God, wrath means the anger of God being unleashed on you. See, you will never experience wrath. You will never experience the wrath of God. Are you saved? Well, you not here in the point of you to wrath. These are the last days, but all this stuff going on around it, here in the point of you to wrath. I'm gonna stay right there. See, we we were almost out, but y'all don't hear it, so I gotta preach a little harder. Buckle my shoes a little tighter, preach a little bit long. He here not appointed us to wrath. Man, that's good news. When all these terrible things start hitting the earth, he ain't upon us to wrath. But to obtain salvation, Sotivia, by our Lord Jesus Christ. How did we get this? Who died for us. Whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. So in your mind, you ought to be comforted. Because, watch this, and five of y'all will get this for the rest of y'all maybe by midnight. Because if you are saved, you are saved. Yeah. Where am I saved, folks? Okay, wave at me. If you save, you save. You save, you save. Are you hearing me? So, okay, let's close like this. We'll close like this. So, so okay, Jesus. How many of y'all, Jesus is your Lord? Amen. All right, because see, you've got to change your expectations. Why, why, why? Man, some good things have been happening for me. Maybe it's because, maybe it's because your magnet been pulling on the wrong side. Maybe your expector is broke. Because David said, I've got, I've got some stuff going on, but, but my expectation is from him. I'm believing, I'm looking, and, and, and pardon my grandma, but him is good. And, and, and what's going on right now ain't good. And, and I read in the book where it says every good gift. And every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of light with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning with him. So if Jesus is my Lord, you, you know what the Bible says? I'm going to show you some shouting stuff. The Bible says that he's the same. Yesterday and today 
today and forever. Hold on, I got a ways to go. So, so look, so if he's the same yesterday and today and forever, that means, guess, you know what that means? That means that what he did yesterday, I'm talking about Jesus. Because the Bible said Jesus the same. So what he did yesterday, he'll do it today. And what, he, what he'll do today, he'll do tomorrow. So, so David says, I'm looking to the future. I'm going through a little something, something right now. But I'm looking to the future. But my expectation is from him. I'm, I'm, ex I'm expecting. I'm, I'm expecting. I'm expecting something good. Hmm. God, yeah, yeah. This look crazy right now, but you know what? God is up to something. He's up to something. I'm expecting something good. So if he's the same yesterday and today and forever, that means what he did yesterday, he'll do it today. Acts 10 and 38. Let's see what he did yesterday. Acts 10 and 38. Is Jesus your Lord? Yes. You belong to him? Yes. Is he your savior? Yes. Did he save you? Yes. All right, well, what he did yesterday, he'll do today. Acts 10 and 38, I want you to turn there and put your eyes on Acts 10 and 38. So, so I, I have reason for expectation. I have a why behind my expectation. I have a reason for expecting something good. See, see. And see, uh, you Acts 10 and 38? Look at me right quick, let me tell you this. See, this, look at me this woman. See, this is why, this is why they just have to live by faith. See, we walk by faith faith not by sight sight is five, is five senses this is a sensual realm. that's why you can't afford to be a sensual or a carnal Christian sensual me of the senses because faith does not look at what's seen can I help you Faith calls things that be not as though they were. That's what faith does. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We walk according to the word of God. And, and so therefore, watch this. When stuff looks crazy, when situations get crazy, we put up our spiritual dukes and we fight the good fight of faith. We put up the shield of faith wherewith we shall be able to quench, put out, extinguish all. I wish my church would read the Bible. All the fiery darts of the wicked one. And you get to the point where you're not moved by what you see. You move only by what God said. You move only by what God said. I said you move only by what God said. So I'm expecting something good. <laughs> I'm expecting something good because what he did, he's still doing. What did he do? Acts 10, 38 says how God. See, you got the wrong idea of God and Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. What did he do? Who went about doing what? I can't hear you. I still can't hear you. Say it a little bit louder. He went about doing good. And healing, how I many? All. 
that were oppressed of the devil. I got reason to be having a good expectation. Huh? And you need to understand if it look bad, the credits haven't rolled yet. The movie ain't over. I'm talking about my life story. He said he would bring me to an expected end. One translation said, I have hope in my final outcome. I look at what it looks like. The end ain't rolled yet. And it don't have nothing to do with a fat lady singing. It's not over till God says it's over. And the end is going to always be good. Well, Pastor Lawson, I hear what you're saying, but I need to know something because, see, you need to understand that I'm going through something bad right now. Something's good still going to happen. This takes us over into the Christian knowledge. Christian knowledge is over into the we know. Something bad is happening right now in my life, Pastor Lawson. I told you you don't need this message. They just file it. You just file it. Something crazy going on right now, Pastor Lawson, in my, in my life. You need to get over in the we know. My body. I got sickness in my body. I got pain in my body. You need to get over in the we know. My money's funny, my chain is strained. You need to get over in the we know. Confusion all up in my house. You need to get over in the we know. If you get with God, God will cause you to know some things. If I had a Bible reading church, I could be through. Paul said, we know something. Paul said, we know something. We know that all things. See, see, we serve a God who's, who's behind the curtain. We can't see him, but he's back there. He's back there manipulating situations and circumstances. We can't see him, but he's behind the scenes. We know, we know. I wish I had some we know people. We know. How can you hold your head up when stuff is going so crazy? I know some things. How can you still say you got faith when you're going through something? Because I know something. You're in the hospital. They've diagnosed you with a bad disease. I still know something. It may not look good right now, but I serve a God who's behind the scenes behind the invisible curtain and he's back there working things he's working things together he's even working it together when I mess up he's even taking my mess ups and turning them around we know that all things I wish I had a praying church we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them that are the called according to his purpose. I may not know everything, but I know my God. He's a good God. I said he's a good God. And he's working behind the scenes. He's working stuff together. He's taking my mess and making a message out of it. I'm talking about my God. I wish I had some we know people. Is there anybody here today that's ever been in a mess? It looked like your mess was going down for the last time. But God, I said God, he stepped in with his good self and he turned it around. I'm looking for a witness. Is there anybody here that's had a wild situation but God came in and tamed it all? Do I have a witness? Is there anybody here that was sick in their body, looked like they couldn't get well, 
the doctor says it's cancer. But my God said I got some stripes that can heal your body. I wish I had some we know folk. Can I get a witness? Is there anybody here that knows something about God? Do you know him? Have you tried him? Have you tasted? Have you seen that the Lord, I said the Lord, I said the Lord, the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth. Stand up. Are there any we know folk in here today? Throw your hands in the air like you really do care and say thank you Lord. You've been good. You are good. I'm expecting I know we ain't supposed to be talking to each other, but just pointing at somebody and say, I'm one of the we know folk. And my God, we'll work it together. He'll turn it to good. What the enemy meant for evil, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'll take a bad report and turn it into something good. Do I have a witness? He'll, he'll take a bad situation. And turn it into a testimony. Do I have a witness? You have a right to expect something good. Because your, your dad is good. You got a good daddy. See, that's where we got to flip the script. In our mind, we got to flip the script from him being just God, which he is, but he's daddy God. He's Father, Father of God, he's Father God. So the Lord told me to tell you this in closing, so keep yourself in the love of God. I grew up in Kinston on University Street. It's right, I grew up right in front of the tabernacle where the tabernacle is now and it was a dirt street when I came along and there was a man lived down by the curve and he drank and he get drunk and he he fly by the house. He fly by the house. The dust would just be going everywhere. And uh, my mom and dad told me, I said, look, boy. He said, you stay out the street. Stay out the street. You stay in the yard. He said, stay in the yard. And don't. And if you go down there, you can go down to the corner. Don't you cross that corner because it was another street there named Hudson Street. Don't you go cross that street unless one of us is there watching you. Because even though it was a dirt street, cars you to fly up and down the street, I mean, like, vroom, dust everywhere. Stay in the yard, stay in your yard. Watch this, if you stay in the yard, you'll be safe. 
So, 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 so the Lord told me just drop this on the end because see, you can mess this thing up. See, you can mess it up. How do you mess it up? You mess it up by doing what the Bible called in the old covenant, trespassing. This is how you mess it up. You mess it up by going in the street. And the street is where the enemy, you are on his territory. See, my parents own the yard. But the street belonged to the city. I can't get no help here. So, so see, when you start trespassing, here's a word we don't like in the modern church, but I'm going to say it anyway. Sin. Sin can mess up your, your good stuff. It can. And sin tries to entice you into believing this over here, what I have over here, is better. Come on out here in the street. And you go in the street and then you get run over rather than going over. So all Father says is stay out the street. Don't trespass. Because see, when you get on his territory, he has a right to afflict you. Can I tell you, can I tell you, watch this, I'm finished. I promise you I'm finished. A lot of the mess we have gone through, listen to this, it wasn't God. Listen to me. It was our decision. We can't get better till we own that. Now, now see, so, so people try, God trying to tell you something. God, listen, God trying to tell you something now. That he's a good God. And he can even take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it into something good. That's the kind of God we serve. Are you hearing me today? So stay out the street, church. I'm talking to save folk now because we already took a poll from this go. Just by every hand in here went up. So I'm talking to save folk. I don't care how much the enemy tries to entice you. He can only draw you away with something that's already in you. And in this generation when nobody wants to talk about sin. Oh, never. Oh, who shoot sin? He doesn't sin. Who shoot? Do what you want to do. That's what. See? And you better watch it. You better watch it. You better watch it. The enemy sly, slick, and wicked, 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 wicked. He'll tip you over there, then he'll run over you. And you know what they do? He'll leave you laying in the street. We went on a ride over there, rolled down by Cove City, down that way, just riding. And we got there on Queen Street right by the railroad track, and boom, a man fell off his motorcycle. Right there in front of us. Bam! I mean, he hit it hard. Then he went to hollering and screaming. Oh, he was in such agony. He was in such pain. I mean, so I jumped out that car, being real careful so I wouldn't get run over. And, and I ran over to him. And somehow or another, right there where the railroad track is on Queen Street, I ain't preaching about this, but see, you need to understand, his tire got caught. In the, it's something about motorcycles and railroad tracks. I don't understand this. Something about motorcycle and railroad tracks. But anyway, he said that the track caught me and I fell. I said, what happened? The track caught me and I dialed 911. He was just screaming and hollering. But before we got there, he was just laying in the street. Of course, people start gathering around. I call 911. And that's what the devil will do. He'll make you slide, slip, then you fall, and he'll leave you laying in the street. But you know how good God is? God will come by just like I did and give the help that's needed. My closing word is you can expect something good, but stay out the street. 
Stay out in the street. Because the devil will leave you laying there. And in all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. One more time. Say with me, I'm expecting something good to happen. Say with me, every morning I wake up, every morning I wake up. I'm expecting something good to happen in my life. And if something bad is going on right now, say it. My God is going to take what the devil meant for evil and turn it into something good. Lift your hands and give God praise in And you know what's so good? Elder Jeffrey, this same David. David said somewhere else. He said, he said, goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. It's gonna follow me all the days of my life. But he didn't stop right there. He said, and I'm gonna dwell. He said, I ain't going in the street. I'm gonna dwell in the house of the Lord. go back. They know where to go back to. Sunday morning, believe in me. If you believe, a wave at me. Say, I believe in Jesus. I'm saved. If you couldn't wave your hand, I want to give you an invitation to be saved today. That's a bodybuilding message. It's for the body. And you need to get in the body. Being born doesn't make you a child of God. Being born again brings you into God's family. Anybody here today has never remember a time when you invited Jesus Christ into your life and with your mouth you confessed him as your Lord and your Savior. If you've never done that, then you're not saved. And if you are saved, you have every reason and right to expect goodness and mercy to follow you every day. Every morning you wake up, there's new mercies. I wish I had somebody. Every morning you wake up, there's goodness just waiting for you. God got something good for you. I didn't understand it then, but I remember years ago, some of y'all may not remember, back in the old days when Oral Roberts used to come home. And I didn't know what I know now. And I was a skeptic. I was a pessimistic. And they would close the show every Sunday. Saying, something good is going to happen to you. Happen to you. This very day. This very day. Something good is going to happen Jesus Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way how God gave the Holy Ghost to Jesus he went about doing good doing good healing all oppressed of the devil God was with him. We serve a good God. I said, we serve a good God. He wants to do something good. If something bad happens? I heard something. I heard something. I heard something. I hear stuff and I just turn it into, I turn it into preaching. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard the coach up at a and He says, you know his, you know his, statement is, he said, if something good happened, keep playing. If something bad happened, keep playing. I'm going to flip the script. If something good happened, keep the faith. If something bad happened, keep the faith. 
That's a good place to stop. Good place to stop. You may be seated. Somebody here today and want to be in the Bible believing Bible teaching church, my wife and I will be down front and we'll be glad to talk to you about being a member of the Jump and Run Church if the Lord's soul would move on your heart. Amen. Amen. Everybody, everybody needs to be hooked in to a Bible believing, Bible teaching church. Everybody. I said everybody. 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 So if you're not in one, you need to get in one. This is not the only one, but this is one. And I can recommend it to you if you need a place to be instructed. Well, that's the message for today. Look at your neighbor and say, we serve a mighty good God. <laughs> Pastor Della's going to come give us some announcements. And if you prepare your offering, I'll pray over it.